Welcome to the AWS Summit. My name is Marco Simontacchi. I am a senior technical trainer at AWS based in Singapore. Today, I'm presenting on the AWS Well Architecture Framework. First, let's go over why we are here. The goal of this session is to build a solid foundation using Well Architected for the teams in your organization that use AWS or are migrating to AWS. As your teams are enabled based on the understanding of Well Architected, the scale of adoption should increase and accelerate. Let's see what is the agenda for the session. First, I will explain what is the AWS Well Architected Framework. Next, we will take an overview of the Well Architected Framework. We will also take a look at performing a Well Architected Review. Finally, we will look into what is available in the Well Architected Framework. Okay, let's start. First, we will look into what is the AWS Well Architected Framework. Look at the workloads and systems within your organization. How confident are you that those systems are built following best practices for the cloud? At AWS, we ask, are you well architected? AWS started asking, are you well architected in 2012? In 2013, we asked Solutions Architect to start conducting reviews of customer workloads. In 2014, questions across four pillars, security, reliability, performance, cost optimization were added. In 2015, AWS published the AWS Well Architected Framework. In 2016, AWS added the Operational Excellence Pillar. In 2017, we started to educate our partners on how to apply Well Architected to the systems they were building. Furthermore, AWS introduced the concept of Well Architected Lenses, which extend the guidance offered by the AWS Well Architected to specific industry and technology domains. As of today, these domains include machine learning, data analytics, serverless, high-performance computing, IoT, SAP, streaming media, the games industry, hybrid networking, and financial services. In 2018, AWS launched the AWS Well Architected tool, a self service tool designed to help you review AWS workloads at any time without the need for an AWS Solutions Architect. We also added improvement plans based on the areas of high and medium risk identified by the AWS Well Architected tool. In 2019, the AWS Well Architected tool and the Well Architected Partner Program expanded in multiple regions. In 2020, AWS announced the availability of a new version of the Well Architected Framework. AWS has made changes in response to your feedback, as well as to industry trends that are becoming widely adopted. AWS focuses on four themes, removing perceived repetition, adding content areas to explicitly call out previously implied best practices, and revising best practices to provide clarity. These changes are intended to make it easier for you to understand and implement the best practices in your workloads. In the same year, AWS also announced the serverless lens, which added a set of additional questions that help customers understand how to design, deploy, and architect serverless apps following the framework best practices. AWS also added the Review Owner Workload property to allow customers to easily identify the primary person or group that is responsible for the review process. Finally, in 2021, AWS introduced the Sustainability Pillar to help organizations learn, measure, and improve their workloads using environmental best practices for cloud computing. The sustainability pillar contains questions aimed at evaluating the design, architecture, and implementation of your workloads to reduce their energy consumption and improve their efficiency. The pillar is designed as a tool to track your progress towards policies and best practices that support a more sustainable future, not just a simple checklist. Why would you want to apply the AWS Well Architected Framework? Because you want to build and deploy faster. By reducing emergency response and capacity management and by using automation, you can experiment and release value more often. Lower and mitigate risks. 
Understand where you have risks in your architecture and address them before they impact your business and distract your team. Make informed decisions. Ensure that you have made active architectural decisions that highlight how they might impact your business outcomes. Learn AWS best practices. Make sure your teams are aware of best practices that we have learned through reviewing thousands of customers' architectures on AWS. We have seen customers use the AWS Wellact Data Framework to successfully achieve all of these. Well Architected is a mechanism that helps you be successful in your cloud journey. Learn the strategies and best practices for architecting in the cloud. Measure your architecture against best practices. When we have learned best practices and we have a system designed and deployed, we want to measure our architecture against these best practices and look to see if there are opportunities for further improvement. Ongoing improvement is the goal. Improve your architecture by addressing any issues. Now that you have measured your workload against the best practices that you have learned, you can implement changes to address the issues you have uncovered. The workload is evolving and taking advantage of new services to ensure that it's providing the optimal capability to generate better business outcomes. So what is the Well Architected Framework? The Well Architected Framework provides a set of questions that are based on design principles across six pillars. All of this comes from over a decade of tribal knowledge across Amazon and AWS that we have refined into a framework, a set of white papers. Hundreds of thousands of customers from across our support, solutions architecture, professional services, technical account manager organizations, and even internally, build and deploy the 200 plus services we have on the console today. All these people gave input to common pain points that customers dealt with and the common architectural problems and oversights that were happening. And we started to create questions to address each of these cases. The best practices applied in these questions were summarized into white papers called design principles. Those design principles have been organized into six pillars. Design principles are concepts and ways of thinking that you must have in mind when designing a workload. For example, under security, one of the things you need to have in mind is encryption. What needs to be encrypted? When does it need to be encrypted? For example, a question you might have is, how are you encrypting data at rest? This could lead to, do we need to encrypt data at rest? What's the impact to the business if it's not encrypted? This opens a conversation that gives people insight and ensure that if it wasn't previously addressed, it is addressed at this point. Let's have a look at an overview of the framework and the six pillars. Creating technology solution is a lot like constructing a physical building. If the foundation is not solid, it can cause structural problems that undermine the integrity and function of the building. If you neglect the six pillars when architecting technology solutions, it can become a challenge to build a system that delivers functional requirements and meets your expectations. When you incorporate these pillars, it will help you produce stable and efficient systems, allowing you to focus on functional requirements. The operational excellence pillar focuses on running and monitoring systems and continually improving processes and procedures. Key topics include automating changes, uh, responding to events, and defining standards to manage daily operations. The security pillar focuses on protecting information and systems. Key topics include confidentiality, integrity of data, managing user permissions, and establishing controls to detect security events. The reliability pillar focuses on workloads performing their intended functions and how to recover quickly from failure to meet demands. Key topics include distributed system design, recovery planning, and adapting to change requirements. The performance efficiency pillar focuses on structure and streamline allocation of IT and computing resources. Key topics include selecting resource types and sizes optimized for work requirements, monitor performance, and maintaining efficiency as business needs evolve. The cost optimization pillar focuses on avoiding unnecessary costs. 
Key topics include understanding spending over time and controlling file allocation, selecting resources of the right type and quantity, and scaling to meet business needs without overspending. The sustainability pillar focuses on minimizing the environmental impact of running cloud workloads. Key topics include a shared responsibility model for sustainability, understanding impact and maximizing utilization to minimize required resources and reduce downstream impacts. Design principles help you adopt the appropriate mental model when building for the cloud. This ensures you take advantage of the capabilities of AWS and free yourself from the constraints of traditional approaches. There are general design principles and pillar-specific design principles. This slide shows you a design principle from the security pillar as an example. Let's do a deeper dive on the general design principles. Cloud computing has opened up the technology space to a whole new world of thinking, where constraints we used to have in a traditional environment no longer exist. When thinking about general design principles, it's interesting to contrast with how you would think about this in a traditional environment. You had to guess how much infrastructure you needed, often based on very high level business requirements and demand, and often before a line of code is written. You could not afford to test the scale. A complete duplicate of production cost is hard to justify, especially with low utilization. So when you went into production, you normally found a whole new class of issues at high scale. Any proof of concept or architectural experimentation was done by hand. It was generally only done at the start of the project. You generally had stacked architectures and it was difficult to even think about making a change. You generally couldn't generate data sets that would allow you to make informed decisions. So you probably used models and assumptions to size your architecture. In a traditional environment, you would only exercise your runbook where something bad happened in production. In the cloud, constraints have been removed, so you can use these principles to take advantage of that. Now, let's have a look at performing a well-architected framework review. The intent of a review is to improve outcomes. It is not an audit. It's about a team working out how to improve. An audit usually has some sort of pass-fail mechanism. A well-architected review does not. This should not be finger pointing. It should be a chance to get many stakeholders from the business to work together to make sure we are addressing the needs of the entire business and not just one side of the department. It's pragmatic. We look at advice that we see actually helps people. After you have reviewed the workload, you should continually update it. Use milestones to see how it's improving over time. We have seen teams use the review changes to explain to their business the value they're adding. What have we learned from doing reviews? Review early in the life cycle, quicker and easy to fix things, and can influence design. The most common problem we see is not bad decisions, it's people neglecting a decision. Most workloads have high risk items that need to be addressed. Finding them is not a bad thing, they were always there. If you address them, that's one less thing that can damage or slow your business. First and foremost, if few of your teams have ever asked, how should we do this in the cloud? Or how are others doing this in the cloud? Or even, how does AWS recommend we do this? Then this is a good use case for you. The well architected framework contains a set of best practices that AWS has developed and acquired through over a decade of designing and operating workloads with our customers. The framework will expose those best practices to anyone that is searching for them. Customers also use the framework as a way to define the best practices and standards that lay out for their technology teams to adopt. Using the tool, teams can measure their workloads against defined governance standards. With the well architected framework used across your technology portfolio, you can get an aggregate view of how your teams are maturing and where there might be consistent areas that need improvements focus across organizations and teams. A workload identifies a set of components that together deliver business value. 
The workload is usually the level of detail that business and technology leaders communicate about. Example of workloads are marketing websites, e-commerce websites, the backend for a mobile app, analytics platform, and so on. Workloads vary in level of architectural complexity, from static websites to architecture with multiple data stores and many components. Here's a summary of key concepts. Workloads, the people and teams, processes and runbooks, and technology and infrastructure that deliver business value to a customer. Workload sponsor, the person in the company ultimately responsible for the success of the workload to the company, board, or shareholders. He or she has funding and headcount authority. Pillar sponsor, a subject matter expert for a pillar or lens that can authoritatively answer questions. The review of architectures needs to be done in a consistent manner with a blame-free approach that encourages diving deep. It should be a lightweight process, hours, not days, that is a conversation, not an audit. The purpose of reviewing an architecture is to identify any critical issues that might need addressing or areas that could be improved. The outcome of the review is a set of actions that should improve the experience of a customer using the workload. There are three phases to running a web architecture review. Prepare, where you identify sponsors and scope workloads. Review, where you review the workload. And guide, where you prioritize high-risk items and a treatment plan. You can review the workloads yourself using the Well Architected tool, or you can work with your AWS account team. We also have APM partners who can carry out reviews and implement any improvements for your workload. Whichever way you choose to review your workloads, you will want to involve both business and technology stakeholders. Involving business stakeholders allows prioritizations and additional resource requests. If you would like a partner to help, most partners have an offering where they're able to review your workloads, they will provide you with the results from the review, and a statement of work for addressing the top issues. If you approve the statement of work, that AWS will provide you with AWS credits as well. When running reviews as a team, remember to include as many relevant stakeholders as necessary. AWS-led is based on the most constrained resources, so AWS-led should focus on most critical workloads. The well-architected process is a virtuous cycle, much like the Amazon AWS flywheels. By running reviews on one workload, teams will learn and be empowered to run reviews with other teams on their workloads and also share lessons learned. Finally, let's have a look at section four. What is available in the well architected framework? There are three main parts. Content, the framework itself. It includes white papers and the well architected website itself. Tool, it uses the framework to carry out reviews. And data the information you have from doing reviews, including reviews and milestones. So to get started, we have a website, aws.amazon.com slash well hyphen architected, where you can find links to all our content, including the white papers, Kindle versions of those white papers, links to the well architected tool and online documentation. The website will also provide you with links to well-architected labs, or you can access them directly by going to wellarchitectedlabs.com. Here, you will find a repository with documentation and code in the format of hands-on labs to help you learn, measure, and build using architectural best practices. The labs are categorized into levels where 100 is introductory, 200, 300 is intermediate, and 400 is advanced. If you're looking for guidance and better solutions for a variety of business and technical use cases, you can go to aws.amazon.com slash solutions. Whether you prefer off-the-shelf deployments or customizable architectures, the AWS Solutions Library carries solutions built by AWS 
and AWS partners for a broad range of industry and technology use cases. Now that you're familiar with the AWS Well Active Data Framework, what are your next steps? You join the AWS Summit to learn, and you can keep learning with resources from AWS Training and Certification, whether you prefer self-paced courses or classroom courses. You can also access our ramp-up guides, which list a variety of resources to help you learn. They are available at aws.amazon.com slash training slash ramp hyphen up hyphen guides. Skill Builder is our online learning center that makes it easier for anyone from beginner to experienced professionals to build AWS cloud skills. We offer more than 500 free digital courses that can help you and your team build new cloud skills and learn about the latest services when and where it's convenient in up to 16 languages. Within Skill Builder, take advantage of flexible learning plans, which offer suggested digital courses aligned to a specific domain or job role. As you build your skills, consider preparing for one of our AWS certifications. These industry-recognized certifications span foundational, professional, and specialty levels to validate AWS knowledge and skills, building your credibility and confidence. We invite you to join the AWS Certified Community, which brings together AWS Certified Practitioners and Builders in an exclusive online community. You'll participate in discussion forums, learning and networking opportunities, and challenges from the AWS team to earn rewards and recognition. Scan one or both of the QR codes on the screen to get started with your cloud skills training and certification. With that, I would like to thank you for attending the session. And please do not forget to complete the session survey. Thanks again.